We're going to do Apex. Let's go for it. Oh my goodness gracious me. Look at all that. And we get 10 black mana. We could just kill ourselves here though. That's the only issue. This hand is incredible. It really is incredible. It's just removal city. Which is very demoralizing for the opponent if they saw. But this is Rakdos we're talking about here. Fantastic. We can't target any of their things. So yes, we are now actually screwed. And it has absolutely turned the tables on us. And then Chalmers have Shroud. Wonderful. 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 We do have Liliana though. So we get one thing out of the way. That's not a... That's not an enchantment. Okay. We got lucky there. We don't want to reveal the Liliana just yet, do we? Let's go for Rowan. We want to, we want to make them think they're safe by going for a Calyx or something. And then surprise, mother... Chucker, Liliana will come out and go slap them in the face. This artwork is just extraordinarily good, isn't it? It's beautiful artwork there for Liliana. Slumbering keep guard. When it enters the battlefield. Oh, sorry, when it enters Scry 1. Okay. So we want to kill this. And then we want to sacrifice the Calyx. They're going to love us. They are going to love us. Black, black, black. So, fail push. Nice. Liliana. Ooh, brutality. Brutality mode enables. No Let's make this quick. Their shroud cannot save them. Well, until they play another enchantment, then we're screwed. And the Nashi will do a good job of uh, one off Bellis' Citadel here. So, we could ninjutsu them in. Is Nashi a boy or a girl? I'm actually not, not sure, to be honest. <clears throat> I know that they are Tamiya's adopted child, though, which is interesting. Lightning bolt. So, what do we do? Do we just get... What do we do? I don't know what to do. The red source. Draw a card. Yeah, we'll draw a couple cards. Go for Nashi. No ninjutsu. Guard. I'm tired of your swing in. So following turn they can get the Calyx. Down to 17. Right. Minus two. We can make them sack Calyx again though. But if they do play another enchantment, they get a spirit. But luckily we can bolt that, so we'll see. Penrith transformation. Ooh. They turned our rat into an elk. That's very sad. That is very sad. Interesting how they're more scared of this. I guess it, yeah, yeah, I think that's the right move because that makes our Rowan better. But little do they know, our hand is terrible. Really? It is kind of terrible, isn't it? Prosper. Okay, let's kill the Skrelf. Do we just attack? Well, we're going to go for Prosper no matter what, aren't we? Because that is just a sick card. And let's swing in here, I think. Do we swing in? Yeah. Try and kill him with the Elk. And we're definitely going to uptick the Liliana. So even if they use the one damage to get through here, we'll still have two loyalty to get rid of the Calyx following turn. If they block here, it's a bit sus, which means they might have a... Ah, uh, okay, so they probably have a board wipe if they do that. No, okay, so n no board wipe. Otherwise, that would have been a silly not block. It's a weird sentence, isn't it? Silly not block? <laughs> we all have things we all the glitter's intriguing. So we're playing top deck mode now, which is great with the Liliana, right? Because we don't care about our hand. What are they going to do? Can they scrape this back? Can they bring this back from the depths of hell? And the answer is no. It's too far gone. Right, so Brink is first with Tameshi. I don't know if I want to keep this hand or not. It feels a bit slow. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan this. Wow, okay, now this is a lot more exciting. Hell of a lot more exciting than the previous one. Soul Guide Lantern. Does that worry us? Exhaust cards from graveyards. No, not really. 
Not until we have any reanimation. Don't think we do, currently. So the closer we get to the Citadel, the more broken our deck is going to be. But are we going to be able to resolve anything? Who knows? If they go for Temeshi in the following turn, we're going to follow up nicely with the Liliana. They're dying to use the Soul Guide Lantern. Interesting addition. Maybe they're expecting a lot of graveyard decks. Not seen that many recently. Hedron Archive. Okay. And the Moon Silver Key. So it's basically loads of artifacts. Am I that worried? Mm. Not sure. Do we go for this or do we go for Liliana? I think we go for Liliana. What's the toughness on that guy? Three. Okay, so we'll keep this the bolt and we'll problem. discard and the glint sleeve, I think. I'm tired of your Having Liliana out this this early is gonna be nice. Only two cards left in the hand. They can draw two more with the Hedron Archive, but they'll lose two mana. So I don't know if they want to do that. Boundary Inspector. Okay, so we have the bolt for that. Happy to wait though. Do you want to bolt that here? No, we'll wait. Okay, let's see if they counter this. If they do, they're just not going to have any cards in their hand. Interesting. Right, well, again, if they use a counter, we just get rid of stuff. In the hand. Counter spell. Okay, well, they must really not care about that last card in the hand then. So they're going to search for something. No, okay. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. Forget. Ah, March of Otherworldly Light. Okay, now they're going to get themselves. Let me guess. Is it going to be the big power stone thing? Key to the archive. That's curious. Key to the archive on this field is a bit lackluster. They're just going to go for a random key to the archive. They're hoping for an extra turn, I presume. Hmm. Not, not what I would search for. I hope they don't like that last card in their hand either. Do we go for the Gix first? Or do we just discard the Gix? Let's just discard the Gix. Not really bother. I'd rather resolve the Rowan, to be honest. Getting rid of the monster, they must really love this final card in the hand. What on earth? I'm tired of your secrets. Okay, and here comes Rowan. So we have we have Liliana on ultimate now. So we can separate their permanent into two piles. Do you want it two to ooh? Elspeth conquers death, maybe? So that was the card that we're banking on. They can't even cast Elspeth Conquer's Death. They've got one planes. Rivers Review. Right, okay. That was fun, wasn't it? So I guess we'll just go for the Strike at Rich here, and then we can ensure the Burlis are sitting on the following turn. Man, that was a lot of nothing, wasn't it? Like just bluff. Just like gump. Not it's not even just it's not cards that actually do anything. It's just I don't know, it just feels like nothingness so we're gonna draw so decline that let's get the set out first because that is the most expensive and we'll start losing life playing things sign in blood it's a real shame we don't have the rowan out here but oh shielded that would have been pretty awesome for all that stuff so now they've got loads of treasures which means they can return return a land to return an artifact or enchantment from the grave to the battlefield. Um, am I that bothered? Not yet. I mean, if the key or the Hedron Archive go to the bin, then maybe. Yeah, I guess they've been keeping us at bay, but they've not been doing much else. They're going to return a land and draw a card. I mean, that seems okay. Interesting they chose to return the one planes they had, but... Mnemonic Sphere... Okay, so we've got ourselves an interesting game here. Draw. At this point, I'm not really caring about Smothering Tithe too much. 
find that. Let's try to abrade the Tameshi. But it is kind of irritating. One, two, three, four, five. They're going to draw in response, and they've got four mana open still, which is kind of ludicrous. Man, if we had the children out, they would be hurting so much, but. Okay, let's get out the Rowan as well. Do they have any counters? Wash away, Jesus. Man, this is a toxic build. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. So that was me thinking it was a unique Tameshi build, but it's just copy-paste. <laughs> it literally just is copy-paste Azorius build with Tameshi and some artifacts. Okay, fine. Edgy. So the gift of Tameshi is five mana. They can't do too much else with that. Maybe they can get back Lantern or Bauble or something. So it's a weird ability, right? Returning a land. What's the, what's the flavor for that? Going back in time? Re getting Amnesia? Reality Architect. Who knows? Could be, it could be anything. I know he made the reality chip, so it could be time travel. Drawing two cards every turn seems pretty good, right? That smothering tile has been keeping him in the late game as well. Ooh, invoke despair. Can we resolve this, do you think? Let's try. It's going to cost us five life. If this resolves, we kill the Smothering Tide, which is important as well. Nice one. Go for the throat. Ah, guess we'll try. Tameshi is annoying. I'm going to draw two. So trying to find a counter spell of some kind, maybe. I've got six cards in hand, which is ludicrous. Shieldred should help a little bit. When I win, you're and let's each play a discard here. So yeah, I don't know. I don't want to think they're they're not doing much, I suppose, but they've got double our life for now. So we have a bit of a challenge on our hands here. At least they come on across seven. It's unlikely that's going to do much more from here on. Unless they have an amazing backup plan. I'm actually Metamorph. going to copy the... Shieldred. Ooh. That's kind of irritating. We do have Liliana for that, but do they have a s answer for... Interesting. So now they can draw willy-nilly. So nothing happens because they gain and they lose, so nothing changes. <clears throat> Fine one vessel. Well, I think we have them in a bind now, then, if this is the case. So at parity, I'm going to awakening. So this is going to be X. Let's get rid of the shield. That is annoying. And we'll play this as a tap land. Because we don't have Rowan out anyway. Prosper. How interesting is Prosper here? Probably not worth four. Let's just see what's in the hand first. They want to use River's Rebuke. So nothing. It's just lands and a sphere. Sure. Down to nine. Sure. We'll go for Nashi as well. Okay, so unless they have a board wipe, I think they're just dead. But yeah, that was worrying at one point. They had a lot of that. When they demonic tutor and the river's rebuke, things were not looking so great for us. Magic sphere. If they get a farewell or some kind of board wipe, they'd be fine. 
for a little tiny bit. Liliana would remain. Oof, yeah. Azorius decks tough when they have all that control. Wow, this is a really crazy hand. Almost entirely full art. Five, five of seven of the cards are full art. It's pretty awesome. So... I think we'll go for this coming and tapped. Extus. Okay, so there's two modes on here. So many modes. I always found Extus really hard to use. There's so much stuff going on. Double Strike cares about Voltron. Magecraft cares about instants and sorceries and none legends in your graveyard. It's just so much scrap. Awaken the Blood Avatar needs you to have go wide strategy. It's just too much going on, I think. I think this was a really cool try, but it just doesn't work, in my opinion. It's just too much. Such a shame because the artwork is awesome. This guy's meant to be Voldemort on Strixhaven. Kite Self Freebooter. Okay, so it's always peculiar when I see cards like Kite Self Freebooter. I don't know. It's a strange one. They got rid of the Apex of Power, which is a 10 mana card. Okay, we're going to get that back soon anyway, I guess. Now, I don't want to speak too soon, but if, if you do take the Apex of Power here, what is the goal? Like, I can't cast this... I can't cast this until I have three red sources, and I've only got three lands out, four in my next turn, so they think I can lose six life in my next turn and get three red sources in my next turn? Hmm. Who knows? And they just pass. Well, we can add black here. Our spells cost one less. So she's like a mana dog, right? Go for the Shieldred. So we'll sack the Kite Self Rebooter. Get it out of the way. It's just one of those weird, annoying cards that doesn't really... It's, it's not a great card because if... I'd rather just play one mana Thoughtseize, get rid of the card completely... Swords of Passions. Now they kill it. Bear in mind, they had this in their hand in the in the previous turn. Yeah, I think that was ill-timed. So they also exiled the Rowan rather than the Shieldred, which is a curious, but maybe they have another answer here. Doesn't really matter either way. We have to invoke Despair to just annihilate their next creature. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Maybe there's an absolute baller master plan here that I'm just not seeing. Ardent Elementalist. So they're going to get back. Swords. Right, okay. So Shouldered will bite the dust. Um, I guess we'll just attack first. Yeah, we'll go for the Invoke Despair. Why not? It's a sack effect, which means it's going to be difficult to pinpoint this stuff anyway. So getting rid of that doesn't feel great, but drawing two cards feels great as usual. And by the looks of it, they might have a few graveyard recursion effects here that we can take advantage of. The graveyard trespasser can get rid of creatures in the graveyard that they might, they might choose. So that would be interesting. I mean, we've also got Bajuka Bog, but we'll go for this first. Otherwise, we won't gain the life. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll go with the looting, yeah. Some nice incidental value there. And then to add insult to injury, we're just going to put Duke of the entire graveyard as well. Which is just funny, because Exus cares about them having a graveyard, so... And now they choose to exile the Shieldred. So is this a, is this a loop with the Elementalist? Kind of irritating if it is, isn't it? They're gonna get back the kites off freebooter, okay. But they lose the graveyard. Sure. So I wonder what they're gonna go for next with the freebooter. So they could have got back anything there, any non legend. But they chose to get back the, the freebooter? What? Surely the answer would have been to go for the Ardent Elementalist, which gets back the Swords 
again at another point or another spell later on. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? Just weird. Some weird stuff going on here. This has got. Okay, we'll go for Rowan and then the Call of the Ring, I think. I've said it before, when people don't play how you think they're going to play, it actually makes it kind of more annoying because you can't predict what they're going to do. And there's a particular person watching this video who I've known for a very long time, who I know he'll be smiling listening to this. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Unpredictability in instability, chaos and randomness. And someone like me who's very logical... Um, it hurts my brain. Just put it that way. It hurts my blooming brain. The ring tempts you. It would tempt Ragavan. Imagine Ragavan with a ring. It'd be pretty crazy, right? Pay two life. Of course. Ooh, feed the swarm. We can just go crazy with another, another red source. We don't have another red source, do we? That's the issue. So we've lost two life. Feed the swarm. Oh, that's such a shame. That is such a shame. I guess we'll just go for the one ring first. So we need that red sauce. That tomato ketchup. So we get protection from everything until the turn. This is where it gets exciting. If I can cast Apex and show you guys how cool it's going to look. <clears throat> Infectious Inquiry. I don't really want to... Yeah, let's save these life loss things for the following turn. Because I think we want to we want to make a spectacle here, don't we? So we're not going to attack because now they've got Sun Titan. And Sun Titan can just bring back small things anyway. So, in our next turn, we're going to lose two life, three life. So our spells will be three cheaper with Rowan. Let's just hope they don't have anything ridiculous. Wow, it comes back to us. Automatic Temptation is kind of bonkers, right? Okay, there's the red. Oh my goodness, we're going to be able to do this, aren't we? So... Wow, this is actually crazy. Feed the Swarm on the Sun Titan. Why did it use that red source? Why did it use that red source? I hate magic. I really hate magic. It used the one red source. We had freaking hell. That sucks. That really does suck. Um, two. Oh, that, that's ridiculous. We've lost nine life. Fine. So we're not going to do what we wanted to, to do. Why did it do that? Why? <laughs> it taps the red sauce. In hell. Oh, that's annoying. I know there's probably some weird logic. Oh, no, we can actually still do it. We can still do it. Okay, Apex. We can still do this. So our spells cost nine. But the issue... See, the issue now is... Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Apex of power for three red. Oh, my goodness. And we get ten of any colour. Let's go... If any one colour. Oh, that sucks. I guess we'll go for red. Wow. Ten red. So, Fari Emancipation. Man, that actually sucks. We really should have maybe waited a bit longer. But oh well. So, Lightning Bolt now does nine damage. Oh my goodness. Nine damage for a bolt. That would have been crazy. We had so many things we could have done. But again... Only one black mana open. So when you do use Apex of Power, just be careful because, yeah, that's what I wanted to be the first thing I did in the turn. But yeah, because of the way the shuffler worked. <laughs> but yeah, nine damage for Lonely Bolt's pretty crazy, right? That's awesome. Right, opponent goes first, but we have quite an aggressive, crazy starting hand. <laughs> Ragavan and Lonely Bolt go for threat. Look, this is ridiculous. At this point, it's just a Ragavan deck. Let's see what we get. Uh, well, let's see. And more removal. We have to go Ragaman first because it's just so broken. So broken. 
we can actually, if this connects, we can actually get Rowan out as well. Would they actually block, though? You know, would they block? Would they block? I don't think I want to find out, really. Let's just kill the Amara here. Swing in. Do they quit? Most people quit. Most people quit. Wow, okay. This guy's got balls. Balls of steel. Sentinel Stalwart. That's a mouthful. Uh, you may cast the card. Tap an untapped artifact or creature. Do we, do we want to cast this? I'm not. No, that's a bit boring. That is a boring card to cast. It looks cool. Elf Druid Soldier. Yeah, not too bothered about that. Oh, they've got the awesome lands that cost like $30. Who pays $30 for digital lands? Some people do. So 1-1. One, one. So we can actually kill that with a cut down. If we want to. It's kind of cool how the blood from the enemy that she's slicing looks like fabric. It's kind of cool. Looks like a dragon she's slicing. I'm not sure which dragon, but... It's a dragon unless, I think, in the background, unless it's some kind of weird feathery a horse. Feathery horse. It could be. It could well be a feathery horse. There's all sorts of weird creatures in magic. Hydra, goose, cat, dogs, man, spider, floating eyeball, um, giant hammer with legs, two women in a bathtub six giant arms you get the picture there's a lot of weird weird types there's a lot of weird weird players as well makes me wonder what's wrong with people people that take ages come on life's so short you could literally die tomorrow with that in mind let's just play magic you know you know what i'm saying okay to cage's welcome let's definitely cast that because that is very good we could even go for Croxer, which would draw us a card. And make them discard a card. It's kind of That's pretty cool with Takeda's Welcome, something you don't see very often. Makes Takeda's Welcome insanely good. Mana value 3 or less. That works with the Rowan as well. Obviously, you're not going to normally get this in a red black deck unless you're playing Mardu. Mardu. Mardon't. It's up to you. Box it in the bin. We can't cast it just yet. And of course we have another kill spell, which is probably quite demoralizing for them. Because most of their creatures have throats. So more kill spells. They are going to love us here. Definitely gonna kill that though, because we want Ragavan to stay alive, don't we? Attack in, get a treasure stealer thing. And, yeah, we'll go for Rowan. Yeah, I felt pretty mean. But, you have to be mean in 1-1. One -one. It's like going into a boxing match and uh, your opponent's like, don't hit me. And you're like, I'm really sorry. I brought a two-handed sword. And there they are with a, um, a flump. A flump, by the way, is, if, if you're not from the UK, a flump is a brand of floppy marshmallow. Let's kill the Machaeus. We are we're just gonna kill everything they have because we're meanies. We are meanies. Attack in again. They're good sports though, to be fair. Blaze Runner, cool name as well. Swords, nothing to see here. Let's go for Treacherous Blessing. Wow, Ragavan is just broken. Also just drew three red thingies. I'm going a bit insane today. I've played magic for a lot. A lot tonight. A lot. What have we got then? So, do we want to trade Rowan for that? I don't know about this. I don't know if I want to do that. Let's go for Black Market Connections. So, that would be reduction of one. Okay, let's swing in with Ragavan. Okay, so we've got the Abraid. Three damage. So we'll kill the Sarath. 
Nice. Get rid of that thingy bob. Make our spells two less. Trespasser for one black. That's nice. And combined with the black market connections, this is absolutely ludicrous. And we will exile the Sarath as well. Cool. This is kind of gold fishing here, which I do feel bad for. But just look at the removal. One, two, three, four, five. That is that is silly. That is very unlucky for the opponent. Very unlucky. All the premium removal spells at low cost. Let's go full shebang. Okay. We even draw a card for that. Oh my. We can even draw more and lose more. Let's draw and lose even more. Oh my. Can we do Apex? Yes. We're going to do Apex. We're going to do Apex. Let's go for it. Oh my goodness gracious me. Look at all that. And we get 10 black mana. We could just kill ourselves here, though. That's the only issue. Oh, my goodness. Not ice. Let's go for that first. Remember, we're going to lose one life for each of these. Kind of scary. Gain life. Maybe we should just go for the Gorger as well, because we don't, we don't want to risk not gaining any life back later on. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, I think I'm in love with this deck. I've not used it very much, but oh my goodness, the design for this was just absolutely perfect. It really encompasses what I love about Rakdos, and I definitely find myself a Rakdos mage. Rakdos with blue, Rakdos with just any other color. Just, oh, it's so good. The challenge here is so exciting as well because you're getting yourself low on life in order to increase your efficiency and effectivity. And the deck is littered with cards that just reduce your life total. So many cards in this deck reduce your life total. And that's why I love cards like Roan because it just makes those cards even better. Cards that you might not even use all the time, some cards you might do. But let's take a look at some of the cards that just randomly benefit reducing the cost of your spells just by losing life. It's ridiculous. So for a start, we've got these mythic MDFC lands that come in and you lose three life. If you just play this after you've played Rowan, your spells are costing three, negative three already, which is ridiculous. It's just these lands are stupid. Combine that obviously with you already have the, the shock lands, which is going to deal two damage to you as well. Uh, the Blood Crypt over here. So that's spells are too cheaper. We've got known quantities at the One Ring. Every turn you'll lose one, two, three, four life. That'll make your spells so much cheaper. Staff of Completion loses life for everything you do. Just paying four to draw a card makes your spells four cheaper. This is ridiculous. I mean, you know, Murder Strider, kill something, lose two life. Grim Tutor, search for something, lose three life. The higher the number you lose, the more ridiculous your spells are will be later on to cast. And that's where I've got stuff like Apex of Power, which is absolutely ludicrous. So exile the top seven cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from among them. And if it was cast from your hand, add 10 mana of any one color. Normally, this card is really hard to cheat out because you normally cast it for free using other ways like Mizzix's Mastery. But because you're legitimately casting this from your hand with a humongous discount, you're going to get such a humongous boost, a humongous discount afterwards, and 10 mana to play around with is crazy. Pirate Emancipation, Emancipation works really interesting with this deck because it says if a source you control will deal damage to a permanent player now. This includes yourself. So if you were to Lightning Bolt yourself, you would lose 9, but your spells would cost minus 9 at the end, until the end of turn. I know that's a bit extreme, but that's just one example of what you can do. But as a Citadel as well, it's a classic, absolute classic. This, this card was born to live with Rowan. Eventually, your spells are just going to cost 1 or 2 after how much life you've lost this turn. It's ridiculous. And then... After you've lost a lot of life, what do you do? You want to regain it. So stuff like Aetherflux Reservoir is going to save you and get your life back up. Murder Shrine is interesting because it reduces your life and increases it as well. With the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, which is a big spell. Sadly, this cannot be reduced in cost because it only reduces the cost of black and or red spells. But, you know, it's nice to just have a big old life linker menace, which is going to be hard to uh, take care of. Yeah, the deck list is just amazing. This is probably one of my favorite deck lists I've ever built. You've even got stuff like Dark Tutelage. This is an uncommon. We're going to keep real top card in the library and put it into your hand. You lose life equals mana value. It's crazy. I would say 
the, the, the main risk of the deck is obviously you're losing life. You're hemorrhaging life, but at least hopefully by the turn four or five, you probably won the game just because of how much power you're putting onto the board, how many insanely powerful spells and cheap spells. Do not underestimate how low the curve is. Even making something one or two cheaper is going to be great, you know, and X spells obviously are insane. They're like this, hard to think this is an X spell here. And so is this. And they both make you lose life. They work by being a land and they also work by being an X spell. The more X spells, the better. Or just, you know, big, huge spells like Emancipation, Apex, Birds of Citadel, Professor Onyx, this gains you life. But yeah, take a look at the deck list below. I think you'll find this really synergistic and you will love the way this deck has been built. I really really love it i i can't wait to try building her brother will and seeing how the inverse of this works how much life gain there may be i get the feeling he's not going to be quite as good because magic the gathering wants to reward you for jumping through smaller hoops harder hoops to get through so life loss is more detrimental which means the benefit will be greater and life gain is easier therefore it, the benefits will be smaller but we'll, we'll have to see there's a few ways to gain lots of life in in white but yeah who knows maybe maybe he's better you know who knows if you enjoyed this video give me a like give me a sub really supports the channel and if you want to donate because you love me love my content you can check out my patreon below where you can become a member and or donate via ko-fi and every little helps did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos go ahead you know you want to